March 29th, 2022. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. Welcome to this week's episode. So today, I'm going to talk about this little section from Le Jardin Moyer, The Garden in the Rain, which is a piece that I've been started working on last year, um, and how I changed my mind about how I wanted to approach this one little section in terms of which hand is playing which notes. So it's potentially useful, of course, if you are actually working on this piece yourself, but also from the broader perspective of that idea of being open and curious about is there a better way to do something so that always sort of being open to evaluating is there a better option. So when I initially learned this, there's this little bit that uh, starts right here. And of course this, the MD is French for right hand, and the beaming as well would seem to suggest that we play these first three notes with right hand and then left hand and then right hand and left hand and right hand so that the stems the stems of, of those in this case 64th notes i guess are showing us if they're pointing up it's right hand and then left and then right but i felt that that wasn't actually maybe the most effective way to do it because you're coming from two right hand notes oh, sorry there we are these last two notes on the previous line chords much more convenient to be able to just start with the left hand down here and go left right left and that way again here at the end of this line you have these two chords that you could play just with the right hand and then the left hand's ready to go again right here so it, that worked out, I felt, much more nicely than, again, if we go from the end of the previous line, uh, which is this. Having to jump down. Finish here, and then again jump down it. So it just felt, felt as if it would be better to start with the left hand. So that's how I've worked on it for this past year, and I performed this in my live stream concert back in January, and that's how I played it, starting with the left hand. And I think it turned out okay. But I always had to struggle a little bit with this chord here, and, and the analogous chord down here, where trying to fit that left hand in, in this case, you know, replacing on a note that the right hand has just played or the next one, uh, wherever we are. Um, replacing on two of the notes that the right hand has just finished playing. Trying to do that cleanly without buzzing. And even the previous chord, so even, even this one and this one were sometimes a bit awkward and so it, it, again it was okay but it wasn't it was always in some ways the the most awkward part of the piece everything else felt really really good and that felt a little bit awkward and of course i have i've had this memorized for a while which is is great but it's also a danger because when a piece is memorized it's easy for, say, a mistake to slip in and you don't even know it's a mistake because you're not looking at the music because it's all memorized. So I happened to be looking at the score a little while ago and I noticed again that, oh yeah, in the score itself, there's this suggestion to start with the right hand. And so I revisited that idea. <laughs> found that this was much easier than I think for two reasons one is potentially just the angle is a little bit better coming from here than from here as we get higher on the harp it gets harder for the left hand easier for the right hand and also of course because the right hand is just more accomplished than my left hand as much as I would like them to both be equally accomplished the right hand is just more accomplished and so 
has better facility to, to replace cleanly and smoothly and without buzzing and have that sound really, really good. So I ended up deciding that, okay, I'm going to try starting with the right hand. And I'm now at the point where it sounds pretty good. And I'm going to stick with that. I'm happy with that. And it's something that, so this is a piece that I've only been working on for about a year. It's new to me. But even pieces that I've been working on for decades, in some cases, there are times when I'll come across a spot and I'll go, oh, wait a minute, I wonder if I could actually do that a different way and it might be easier or better or cleaner or safer or whatever. And so I really think that that is something that's worth being aware of. Uh, so that idea of always being open to change and new ideas. I mean, it's, it's good in life as well, right? To new information, you go, oh, hmm. Let's let's reevaluate this. So, again, from a vacuum, I think it made a lot of sense to start with the left hand. The way the hands work, it's great. But then there's this idea also of sort of what what I sometimes call battle-tested fingering, right? Where you can give me a piece of music and I can write some fingerings down, and chances are those fingerings will be pretty good. But they might not be perfect because when we actually start playing a piece, a fingering that in theory on paper was great might actually not work quite as well as, as we would like in the context of the piece. And so same here, this isn't a fingering, I guess this is just a which hand is playing which notes, but that in theory this works great, but in practice this ended up working more smoothly. So, and that's where I know for, for myself, right, for, for my publications, I always try to have that be pieces, those be pieces that I've played so that the fingerings are ones that I know actually work at a performance temple. They may not be the best, there may be other options out there, but at least those ones have been tested. And the other thing, of course, that I encountered and which I think is very common if you're going to change something, especially something you've been playing for a while. So again, to try to cultivate that ability, because I know for some people it can be really hard. You learn something a certain way and it can be really hard to change that. I understand that, right? But it's a really good skill to be able to do that. And, and in a sense, we learn to play notes. We learn to play music. Why not learn to, or, or I guess there's no difference between learning a new piece in a sense and, and just relearning a passage a different way. And I mean, of course, it, it, there is a difference. It feels, feels harder to change. And so as I was thinking, okay, shall I change? Trying to start with the right hand and, and learning those that pattern, which felt so strange compared to this, and still doesn't feel maybe quite as automatic. It reminded me of this episode I did a while ago, the, talking about I don't know, the mountain or the molehill or whatever, that oftentimes the most resistance we get to something is that initial encounter with it. So it can feel almost impossible and like a huge mountain to climb. And yet once we get a little ways up, it actually flattens out and almost goes downhill. The path gets much easier. So this initial trying to do this when I've been used to playing this pa passage from memory and smoothly, not having to really worry about it. And now suddenly I'm, what, what is this note? Having to read the music. Get used to this totally different feel. There was definitely a lot of resistance. And, and, and yet, like a lot of these cases, it didn't take that long before it started to fall into place and feel much better. And definitely, I'm really happy that I did persevere through that. But there was definitely a part of me that said, oh, yes, it might be better, but let's just stick with the, the way that I'm used to. Um, and then I also wanted to talk a little bit about sort of the, the sort of the platonic ideal and what will sound best at this moment in time. So I think ideally, I should be able to start with the left hand because again, I think it is a slightly more effective way to start with the left hand and not have to be bouncing the right hand around quite so much to do this, you know, finish with the chord here and then jump down to go right, left is much better than going right, right. So left hand. 
I would like to be able to do that with my left hand as easily as I do with my right hand, to have these chords, to be able to play them and fit them and slot them in with what the right hand's doing, to have that sound just as good. But you also have to balance that against where you are at that moment in time and sort of what your goal is. So in this case, I'm performing this. Like I'm gonna be performing it at the end of, the, uh, end of April. I'm gonna be performing it over the summer. I performed it earlier this year. So my goal here is that I want it to sound as good as possible. In which case, starting with the right hand, is going to achieve that. On the other hand, let's suppose you're fairly new and, and, and you're learning this idea of, of maybe connecting a bunch of notes and it might feel a lot easier to just go rather than or walking the fingers, right? That's a common thing that people like to do or people tend to do. Though in the long run, it's much more efficient and, and better to place them all at once. So in the short term there, sort of plucking note by note might feel and sound better, but that it's not worth it because the primary thing at this that point, I think, in, in one stage of development would be to kind of instill a good basis of fundamental placement and uh, fingering practices. But I want to give an example of um, from my fantasy on green sleeves. So this, uh, let me bring that up there. There's a spot in the second variation, I think. Yeah, second variation where throughout the piece, throughout the variation, we're kind of going left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, 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 right. And in the right hand, those are all just coming off thirds with one and two. But at some point I go, and I have marked to place all four notes and go four, two, three, one. And that's a case of sort of Yes, the platonic ideal, the, ideally you would like to be able to do that, right? That is a good skill to be able to do. And for me, it's, it's, it's just as easy as, as going, well, it's actually slightly easier than going, but just as easy as going or as doing two unconnected chords. But it can also be a huge struggle. And I think in terms of actually playing the piece, There's maybe a slightly different sound. I think it's a little bit safer if you can do that four, two, three, one. It's a little bit safer rather than these jump and changing shapes. But really, it doesn't really matter in terms of playing the piece. And so this might be a case where if you're learning this, you might try this. Just because, again, it would be a good skill to be able to do. And it might be that as you learn it, that becomes that finger dependence becomes easier and easier and it's no problem. But it might also be that at some point you switch from thinking about learning it to say wanting to play it fluently. And it might be that that particular passage is really slowing you down, that this just hasn't improved much. Whereas all these are sounding great. And if you just went one, two off, one, two off, or one, three, one, two, whatever, it might sound great. So then you might switch from saying, okay, yes, this is a good thing to work on, but what I actually want to do here is make this sound as good as possible. So again, I guess just the general takeaway of as you're playing a piece, and especially as you get more and more skilled, really trying to pay attention to what it feels like. And for me, you know, I was aware that this was always a bit of a struggle spot, but I could have earlier, even earlier, it would have been great to kind of not only practice, I did a lot of practice of starting with the left hand, trying to get this feeling comfortable, but also maybe revisiting the music and looking and say, oh, right, the suggestion is actually to start with the right hand. Maybe I should try that. So um, being open, being aware of how you're feeling. And, and of course, sometimes you change something and you go through that effort and it turns out it's not any better or it might actually end up feeling worse and you revert. That's okay, I think. And of course, also, as I say, it can be hard to change something that you've played for years. And there have been times where I've been where I've realized that, oh, I think doing it this way would be slightly more effective, but it's, I, I just, it's not worth, I, I know it so well this one way, I'm not gonna try to change it. 
But in general, I think cultivating that ability to be open to change and being able to change things as you, as you play even a piece that you know well is a great quality. So I hope that was interesting, I hope that was useful, and I will see you next week for another episode of Harp Tuesday. Cheers.